Temperatures are getting colder. Lakes, rivers, creeks are starting to freeze. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. My guest this week is game warden Jackie Lundstrom. Jackie, people are still hunting. They're gonna be ice fishing probably in December if temperatures get cold enough. What are some recommendations for ice thickness if you're gonna head out on the ice? So as the ice forms on the lakes, rivers, ponds, it's important to remember to always check the thickness. For an uh, individual walking out on the ice, a minimum of four inches is now recommend recommended for that. Um, si single file if you have more than one person with you. Um, six to eight inches is the recommendation for snowmobiles, ATVs. Once you get into that UTV, you're into a small vehicle size and you want to make sure you have eight to 12 inches. And then once we get into our bigger pickups and towing out those um, permanent houses, we want to make sure that we have a foot and a half to two feet before going out on the ice. Okay, and one thing to remember is ice is never 100% safe. Correct, no matter the time of year that it's formed, we always want to make sure that you are always checking the, the thickness before going out. Um, just because it looks safe doesn't mean it is. As we mentioned, ice is never 100% safe. Uh, many things can factor in how ice freezes. Explain. So uh, depending on the temperature, the wind conditions, um, the quality of the ice will vary depending on where it's formed at. Stuff closer to cattails and vegetation can be much more unclear and less lower quality uh, versus stuff that's formed out in the middle of a pond. And snow also affects ice conditions as well. Sure, the, the production of ice when snow covered is reduced a little bit um, just because of that extra layer of insulation that the snow provides. Okay, whether you're ice fishing or you're doing some late waterfall hunting or pheasant hunting, uh, springs. Explain the springs that can happen in some of these water bodies. So throughout the state there are natural springs that occur and not many of them are marked and unless you're a local who frequents that area you, you will know where those springs are at, but those of us that maybe are coming there for the first time don't. So it's always important to make sure that you're aware of where you're traveling and check that ice quality, even if you're driving out uh, sporadically in front of you. Okay, what type of equipment should you bring with? We always recommend that you bring with, for checking ice anyway, uh, a chisel or an auger, obviously if you're going ice fishing, make sure you always have a set of ice picks hanging around your neck um, on the off chance that you may fall through the ice. Okay, how about a life jacket? It's always important, no matter if it's open water season or ice season, to have a life jacket with you. And it's important to make sure that on the off chance something does happen while you're out on the ice, somebody knows where to locate you should you not return home when you're supposed to or that you do fall through the ice. Jackie, when you're out ice fishing, there are certain ways to walk on the ice. Explain. Sure, so when you are going out on the ice uh, on foot, obviously we wanna make sure again that we have that four inches of ice. It's important to make sure as you walk out on the ice, you're checking the depth with your ice chisel, but also make sure that your center of gravity is towards your front foot. Um, that's where falls can happen and, and injuries can happen from those falls. So once we get out on the ice and are using our chisel, you know, that's what's going to help us make sure that we don't fall through the ice. Okay, and if you do fall through the ice, what should you do? So the, the way that they describe it is that you want to almost like you're treading water. You're, that's why we always recommend you wear those ice picks around your neck so that you can pick into the ice. And as you kick your feet, you're going to pull up on those ice picks and then reset those picks. And then once you get yourself out on top of the ice, then you're gonna roll away from the direction that you came, you know, towards the direction you came, away from the, away from the water. Um, keep rolling away a further distance to make sure that that ice is back to safe. Once again, ice is never 100% safe. Correct. Even though we wa wanna say that that clear blue ice is high quality and good to go, uh, you just never know what could be hiding within the layers when they formed. A lot of great information, Jackie. Thank you. You're welcome. For more information on ice safety, visit the Game and Fish Department's website at gf.nd.gov. Take these recommendations into consideration when you're heading out late fall or early winter. For Game Warden Jackie Lundstrom and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's program. We'll see you again next week.